Hey guys, this is Carly with Johnny 32 So I will be doing this video today. It's an important message that's going to address the topic of spiritual warfare. Uh, for those that may be watching this for the first time, please know that I am not a prophet, I'm not an apostle, and no, I am not a women pastor. Women pastors are not biblical. Please read the book of 1 Timothy and the book of Titus to learn what the Lord says about that. I'm just a servant of the Lord. I'm here to do, uh, you know, what God has called me to do and that's to share whatever message that he wants me to share, uh, you know, with all all of you based on his word, which is his truth and his absolute truth, and also being led by his Holy Spirit. Uh, I am uh, spirit filled. I always pray and hope to be led by the Lord. It's very important this hour so that we walk in discernment. You know, and again, I'm just a servant of the Lord. I am not, uh, you know, this ministry does not have a, a church. It's just a ministry. And again, everything that I say, you need to test the spirit by the spirit. And first and foremost, God is our source to all things. You know, you want the absolute truth. You have to go to the Lord, Abba or Yahweh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, as well as his Bible, my friends. In this hour where there's so much warfare, it is imperative that every Christian needs to finish the word of God, okay, from, Revel from Genesis to Revelation. Put away the CDs, the DVDs, and the podcasts of people and armor up with the word of God. It's also Im Im imperative for you to wear the armor of the Lord. And like I always tell Christians, uh, it's you know, you, there's only two uh, possibilities for a Christian. You're either a warrior or a soldier for Christ, or you are a casualty, okay? And and the only way to avoid being a casualty is to know the Word of God. Also, again, like the Lord's been telling me for the last two and a half to two, three years, He has been emphasizing for us to be cemented on the Word of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And also uh, get your journal so you can write down whatever prophetic message uh, that God, uh, Jesus wants to reveal to you directly, whether it's in the form of a vision or a dream or just hearing his voice audibly, uh, getting a word from him, etc. God is speaking to so many people. I see baby Christians. Literally, I am I, even some of my friends that are coming into the Lord within the last four to five months. They are walking in this fire, this anointing, this hunger for the things of God. And when I see baby Christians of under a year, under six months who have a greater zeal, a jealousy for the things of the Lord. They love what the Lord loves and they hate what the Lord hates more than the Christian that's been going to church or grew up in the church for 20, 30 years. That is a serious problem, my friends. That If that is you, you need to literally come to the Lord and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation and ask Him to grow you from the milk into the meat. Because again, this hour in this hour, and I'm not here to give you a doom and gloom message. I'm here to warn, to edify, to exhort you guys. And this also applies to me because as you know, we, we're living in a crazy world, and again, the only one that who, who can protect us and save us, and uh, and and that that you know is Lord Jesus Christ, and it is. Again, it is so important that we have to abide in Him. Be holy, be pure, repent and sin no more. We have to stop sinning, you guys. God is not playing around. So again, if God's been convicting you, if God's been telling you, stop doing this, you have to be obedient because the devil is busy. And as a sister in Christ who was a former non-believer and now is a Christian for almost six years, I'm telling you that the enemy is nothing but a killer. He's there to kill, steal, and destroy, and that's not what I want for you. But who cares what I say? It's God's no, Those are not God's plans for your life. God came here to give us life abundantly. And I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about the things of Him, like, you know, having a blessed life, living in His peace, living in His joy, spiritually speaking, you guys. And again, don't let the enemy rob you one more second of your life and delay or derail or abort your God-given prophetic destiny or the plans that God has for you. So again, I can't, I cannot emphasize and I can't stress this enough. I, I do apologize if I sound repetitive, but it, again, it's with a sense of urgency. Finish the word, finish the word, eat the whole word. That's what God told me uh, five years, almost five years ago. Finish my entire word, Genesis to Revelation. All right, listen, I'm going to be uh, exposing this topic um, this is something that the Lord uh, spoke to me, I would say, about a week and a half ago. I released it on Facebook. If you go to the page, uh, johnthetruth.com, there's, def there's different links where you can follow us on Facebook, follow the ministry on YouTube, etc. And I got to say really quickly before I jump into this message, there are two parts to this. The first one is the, the spirit of death uh, that I will be discussing in today's topic, and which is like, you know, I guess the... The part that no one wants to hear, but it needs to be exposed. And then the uh, the, uh, the way I'm going to end this message is the the positive, where you know God can still bless your womb. And I know that there are women out there who are uh, want to conceive and you know etc. And they're having a hard time. But uh, so if the medical if the medical um, 
if the med if medical doctors obviously can't find a solution to the problem, most likely it's because it's a spiritual problem. And you know, when it comes to spiritual uh, problems, war spiritual warfare, only Jesus Christ can perform the miracle. Only He can set you free from whatever curse or witchcraft or demonic spirit that is trying to, uh, you know. Uh, you know, who's trying to, that's trying to latch on to you. So again, just bear with me. I'm going to try to do this message as quickly as possible. I don't want to be too long winded, uh, but just bear with me here. Okay. All right. So here is the actual message. So did you know that the spirit of death can enter a woman's womb through abortion, sexual sin, and pagan practices like yoga? Okay. Now, again, before I go into this, I'm going to give you scripture Okay, this is, a, this is the moment that if you have any questions or doubts, you have to ask the Lord to open up your eyes and ears to hear His truth based on His Word and His Holy Spirit. All right, so I'm going to read this through. <clears throat> I don't care what you think about this post-period. When you're casting out demons in the name of Jesus off people, your opinions and theories have zero validity. The reason why you reject this post is because the demons or foul spirits inside of you um, hate the truth and they don't want to be exposed. My heart, and all those that do know me, my heart is to see people be set free in Christ. And if that means I have to go and tick off some people and tick off some demons on top of it in the process, then so be it. I'm not afraid of the devil because he is defeated in the name of Christ. Now, when I released this post on that day, I cannot, I cannot tell you how many Satanists, witches, and warlocks uh, were following the ministry's page in addition to my own personal page and they were in they had a fit they were so angry they were so upset they were also mocking and denying see because the thing is uh, the demons they're demons and they worship Lucifer they worship the devil they know that what I'm releasing is the doggone truth okay so when I posted this they were so upset and they were trying to uh, come against the post on the page and I had to block in addition to another sister in Christ and she was telling me how we had to block all these people who are trying to come against this post so imagine if the devil worshipers are angry it's because they know that what I'm releasing is the truth straight from the word of the Lord and whatever message that the Lord wants me to share with all of you and of course it also applies to myself alrighty so again so what does this pertain to and as you can see you know, these are some topics. Of course, it's the spiritual warfare. It's, I'm going to, you know, also mention really quickly the demonic kundalini spirit that is passed in, you know, through yoga, okay, or chakras and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I'll be discussing barrenness, you know, disease, pestilence, miscarriage, stillborn deaths, infertility, premature uh, births, the spirit of homosexuality, Jezebel, adultery, promiscuity, goddess, big pagan worship. That is happening right now, and it's all with the spirit of Antichrist, you know. So these are kind of topics that I that I, I mentioned there because again, this is all related to what is happening, uh, you know, in with the spirit of death and how it's affecting so many women, even including uh, Christian women inside the church. Okay, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter six, verses twelve: For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness of this age, against spiritual house of wickedness in the heavenly places. Hosea. 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. I also will forget your children. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 through 18. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Okay, and of course, uh, you know, just to kind of put a little side note, if you or someone you know needs to be encouraged or needs personal prayer in the name of Jesus, please share this video and this post with them and have the message, or you can, you or that person can have, can message me directly if they need prayer, you know, and I just pray again that the Lord will bless the fruit of all wombs in the name of Christ. Psalm, um, for chapter one, Psalm 127 verses three says, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Now, before I get into the next topic, really quickly, uh, so just a few weeks ago, many of you have probably seen it in the news that New York, uh, their governor, has passed the law of post-abortion, you know, which means the baby can be delivered up to the date of birth, 
And if the mother chooses not to keep the child, the child can be killed. Now, if you've, if you've been probably following the news, uh, different states are also taking the exact same uh, you know, uh, measure, whether to vote for the abortion or not. And one thing that I like to say is that over the last several weeks, as soon as that happened in New York, I got to tell you, I'm sure you have been feeling the same. I've been grieving off and on every time I hear about that law, what was what was happening there. And this is, this is demonic, my friends. This is from the pits of hell. Um, it's atrocious to kill a baby uh, at any at any stage from one to from one through nine months, but especially even more so onto the date of birth and just killing it. This is obvious, my friends, this is this is demonic. This is the devil's agenda. Do not be deceived. Uh, people like Governor Cuomo and the, and all those lawmakers, all those people in suits, my friends, they're nothing but devil worshippers. They're nothing but Luciferians hidden behind a the, the title of a politician or a governor. But do not be deceived. These people are demonic because not even you know. I was talking to the Lord when this happened. And I was like, Lord, I I I really believe that even convicts in jail, you know, when the pedophile goes into that place, they kill those pedophiles. Not to say that it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying, like, you know, even though they're criminals, maybe they robbed a bank or maybe like, uh, you know, they they stole or whatever it is. There's limits where you know they would they wouldn't they wouldn't tolerate someone to kill a baby. And to see how our nation right now is literally deciding whether to vote for or against abortion, state by state. The Lord said to me in my spirit a few weeks back. He said. Behold, I place before you a blessing or a curse. And it's from Deuteronomy chapter 11, I believe, verses 26 to 28. You know, and God was very clear, my friends. And this is why it's so important now more than ever. When the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Baal, the spirit of witchcraft, the spirits of death, death and destruction, spirit of Jezebel, is, is running rampant, not only in this nation, but around the world. It is with, a, it is with the, the, it's, um... It's with a sense of urgency that we as believers, we need to keep praying for our nation. We need to keep praying for our states and, of course, our leaders. You know, recently uh, the, the president had a State of the Union and he was very loud about his agenda against abortion, my friends. If you are a Christian and you still hate this president, you need to repent and you need to sin no more. Listen, myself included and a lot of other prophetic Christians, we've been sharing revelation from the Lord that President Trump is his chosen one, okay? He is his chosen, he is his appointed, he is his elected for, the, for a time such as this and it's really sad how still many Christians are coming against this president But and on top of that, a lot of these Christians are still supporting Planned Parenthood and abortion and they're supporting all this evil and you're calling yourself a Christian. My friends, if that is you, you are not a Christian. Whether if, Even if your pastor supports it, if your Christian circle support it, if you're a preacher, your prophet, whatever, whoever's in ministry, if they keep advocating this agenda with Planned Parenthood and abortion, etc., they are not Christians. You are not a Christian because you are not loving what God loves and you're not hating what God hates, okay? So do not be confused. Do not be deceived. If God calls you home and you are still donating to Planned Parenthood, if you are still standing with these feminists, you know, with their pink hats and you're saying, yes, it's a woman's choice, her body, her choice, my friends, you are going straight to hell, Okay. Perhaps your preachers won't tell you that because it's a controversial topic, but the heck with controversy. Jesus, if you know your Bibles, my friends, Jesus was controversial. Jesus didn't come to this earth giving out chocolates and flowers and lemons. He came in there to be a revolution, a revolutionist in, you know, uh, in, in back then in, in Israel. And he there, he, he was wrecking the place. He was putting people in their place. He called them vipers. He called out the sin, hypocrites. He called out the whitewashed tombs, the Pharisees. You know, he called it out, you guys. And it's what a, it's, it's so important that right now, as the body of Christ, we have to come collective against this evil agenda, okay, and only focus on the kingdom of God and trying to bring his will on earth as it is in heaven, my friends. Enough is enough with being a reprobate, enough with the lukewarm Christianity, enough with compromising. God is sick and tired of it, okay? Three months ago, the Lord told me that during prayer, I had, a, I had a vision and I released this message. I saw the gavel. I saw his hand holding a gavel and he was striking the earth and I heard him and I heard him say I'm drawing the line I'm drawing the line choose this day whom you will serve says the Lord 
okay? And then I heard the words weeping and mourning, and that's going to happen in the church and outside the church. Listen, you guys, if this message is tough for you, good. I'd rather you have it here. I'd rather you hear it from my mouth than the day that God calls you into his presence and he says, depart from me. I never knew you, okay? That's the bottom line, my friends. God is saying, who will you, who will you serve today? Pick one. I'm tired of the compromise, says the Lord. I'm tired of the fence, the fence riders, says the Lord. Jesus, again, he called out the sin. Yes, he is love. Yes, he had grace and mercy. But I also want to remind you something. The Lord in the Bible says he is coming back as a righteous, uh, a, a right, uh, he's a righteous judge in a consuming fire. And he's coming back as a lion who's going to roar. And that was a message that I heard around the holidays. I would say, actually, no, about the beginning of January, I heard that message. You know, he's that lion of Judah. Okay, a righteous roar, that righteous roar. And I remember in, in the prayer, in the spirit, I saw his, this big, you know, um, the head of a lion with his big mane. And I heard in my spirit, the, the, the voice of God that was going to roar against the world, you know, uh, uh, towards the, the, towards the earth, you know, he was going to just, you know, uh, rebuke and bond whatever's not of him off the people, off the earth, you know? And I remember I heard like, uh, I heard like, you know, what, you know how a lion, when they're walking and then they're trying to catch their prey, eventually they start running and then they, they build momentum, you know? And in the spirit, I, I saw like these two gigantic paws of like the, the front paws of a lion and it was picking up momentum, you know? And I heard the pouncing of the paws literally striking the ground. My friends, that is God. He is coming back as a righteous judge, a consuming fire, as a roaring lion, okay? Who in his word, he said, I will separate the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goats. And the Lord said, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out, you know? So again, this message it is to warn, this is not the time to be playing with the Lord, my friends, okay? We have to really consecrate ourselves. We have to love the things that the Lord loves. We have to hate the things that God hates. And that is to pick whom we will serve today, okay? All this uh, demonic agenda that's happening across our nation. You see how every state is picking the blessing or the curse. Choose this day. And you have some of the Bible states, they're picking the things of God, States like California and New York, they're in trouble. States like, um, you know, all these states that are picking, like Rhode Island and Massachusetts, they're okay with abortion. They're in trouble, you guys. And not too long ago, I released this message in a previous video, I saw an earthquake hitting California, and it was, it was a horrible earthquake. You know, so again, we need to pray uh, that these states and these leaders will repent. You know, I'm not praying for their mercy. I am praying for the mercy of the unborn. I'm praying for the mercy of the children and the innocent men and women who are, you know, who are there in the crossfire. But these wicked Luciferians, I, I pray they repent, you know. But seriously, like, I'm also praying for justice to be served. And I'm praying that God will clean up house inside and outside the church because this evil has got to stop. Okay, so let me continue with the message really quickly. So, again, um, for example, in a sense of, uh, you know, of the barrenness and disease and miscarriage, stillborn and fertility, etc. Those, you know, again, like this message says, it can enter through abortion, it can enter through sexual sin and pagan practices, okay? I also want to make it clear, this message is not to condemn, because God does not condemn, but the Lord does convict, okay? And as Christians, we have to, iron sharpens iron, and my heart again is when I give you the word of God is to warn you, because I want you to have a blessed life. Listen, there are a lot of women without knowing it, you know, and going back quickly to the abortion issue, I've, I've been watching some, you know, um, information regarding the, the tools that they use, the metallic items and the, and the pliers and, you know, the scaffolds and that they use. My friends, you know, uh, the womb is a very delicate yet beautiful, uh, you know, um, physical uh, aspect of a woman. You know, we're, we're there to usher life, right? And to see how how any woman, maybe they don't tell you this, but when you look at it from a medical perspective, when you are inserting scalpels and knives and all these different types of metallic instruments inside a woman's womb, it creates a lot of physical damage that I feel like a lot of people are not addressing, okay? And this is why, in addition to the physical destruction of the womb for many women, which produces, you know, um, barrenness and infertility and miscarriages, there's also a, a spiritual component, which is the spirit of death. 
that, okay? So even when you may not have the physical damage, there's a spiritual damage. It's the demons of death that is circulating on these women's wombs because you open up yourself to the sin of abortion, okay? And that demon lingers there. The same thing can be said for sexual sin. The Bible says the wages of death, I'm sorry, the wages of sin is death, okay? Anytime we engage in sexual sin, whether you're a believer or a non-believer, because again, the devil doesn't play, you know, he doesn't have a team of preference. He's like, okay, I don't care. His job is to kill, steal, and destroy, and he'll look for the perfect victim to do so. When people are engaged in sexual sin, whether it's fornication, which is also very prevalent inside the church, even if you're engaged, it's fornication, it's fornication. If you're in fornication, if you're in, you know, if you are having, uh, you know, a homosexual, uh, you know, activity, okay, pornography, adultery, you know, lust, you know, and there's a plethora of different sexual sins, okay, anytime that people are engaged in that, you are opening yourself up to demonic portals where the devil comes in, his demons come in. And when the, you know, the Bible says, every time we sin, uh, seven more demons come in. Okay. So if you get it, if you have an idea, you know, calculate how many times are you sinning and how many, and then multiply by the seven demons that keep coming in. My friends, listen, God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the God of life. The devil, it represents death. So it's so important that when we see these things, this is not of God, my friends. We have to be, uh, we have to humble ourselves before the Lord and recognize that we have opened up demonic portals. Recognize that we are engaged in non, in sexual or non-sexual sin. And we can't be, we can't continue to deny ourselves from the truth. If you want to be set free, listen, the Bible, the Bible says God will never go against his word. That God says that his word is not return void. John 8, 32, the same thing with this ministry. The truth will set you free. God is a God. Jesus is a God that loves setting his people free. Now it's up to you if you want him to set you free or, or, or if you still want to be bound to sin. Okay. So when we look at the sexual sin, promiscuity, which is huge in college campuses, you know, I went to college X number of years ago and I remember I've seen all, you know, Thank the Lord that that was never me. But I, but the reality is, I remember in college campuses, sexual promiscuity was huge back then. And it's even worse now. You know, they have the one night stands and they have the shacking up. They're, they're sleeping with now with men. They're sleeping with women, transsexual, bisexual, homosexual. And especially with our culture nowadays, where they're pushing that LGBTQ agenda. Now it's the queer. It's the pansexual. It's the homosexual. You, you know, now you can be a trans and gender and neutral and binary, non-binary. I mean, I've lost count. You know, when you are, when, when our culture is promoting this environment, okay, in the natural, oh, it's just a campaign. In the natural, oh, it's just, you know, uh, trans bathrooms are taking place. But in the spiritual, my friends, you know, the Bible says Ephesians 6, it's about spiritual warfare. In the spiritual, in the spiritual warfare sense or in the heavenly realm sense, these are demons and foul spirits that are lingering over places, over people, over offices, over college campuses, over people's houses, over people's workstations. My friends, it is what it is. Just like when you see a landmark, you know, the devil also has his landmarks, big or small, but you better believe he declares his territory through people's sins. And just like that, we as Christians, we need to declare our territory in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ, you know, because the enemy is doing the same thing. So we, again, we have to consecrate. We have to be holy. We have to be pure. Which, what does that mean? That means if you are a Christian, your job, and you're not married, your job is not to engage in fornication. Okay, stop playing with God. Stop thinking that because you're in the worship team or stop thinking because you hand out Bibles to a thousand people every day or because you go to a mission trip or because you're doing street ministry or because, you know, you're singing or for the Lord, whatever it is. God does not care, my friends. Okay, you can't say, yes, I love you, Lord. This is my form of worship. But then when church is over or you're not doing any or you're not practicing any church activity, you go back home with your boyfriend or girlfriend and you're sleeping with them or you're fooling around with them, or you're living together, okay? You are opening yourself up to demons. And people that even are engaged, I, I keep warning, God does not care if you are a Christian engaged couple. If you're walking in sexual sin, guess what? His hand is not on it. This is why when people, get, when people uh, marry with sexual sin, okay, they have problems in their marriage. 
you know, and all you're doing is to open up even more demonic activity uh, for even the enemy to come in there to even cause a divorce. Why? Because you didn't do it God's way. Okay. You need to repent. You need to stop sinning. The same thing applies if you're watching pornography, whether you're married or you're single. You know, if you are a Christian who is engaged in adultery, if you are if you are flirting with someone that is married, you're in deep trouble, my friends. You are stumbling blocks to that marriage, and God will hold you accountable. The same thing that happens, you know, if you are, you know, uh, getting involved with homosexual activities. If you're sexting, a woman of God should not be posing like Kim Kardashian on her phone all day, all night. That's a spirit of lust. You need deliverance, okay? God in his Bible, Proverbs 31, he said when he wants his daughters to be godly wives, godly women. And if you are a Christian woman at the church, you're supposed to dress in modesty. You're not supposed to have your cleavage hanging out. You're supposed to be tempting men, whether they're single or married, because you become a stumbling block, okay? Now, and we really quickly, just kind of add on, you know, what is a modest woman? Some people say, well, we can't wear jewelry. Well, that's what the Bible says. That is true. But if you are alert, if you are leaning onto the Lord and he shows you things, the sin is not the jewelry. The makeup is not, I'm sorry, the sin is not the makeup. That's what the Lord told me four years ago. It's the spirit behind it. Because you can have a clean face and and no jewelry, and yet you can still seduce and flirt with men. Okay, so again, it can't be to, it can't be to the extreme. You can't be completely looking like a you know the Rocky Horror uh, you know uh, you know drag queen makeup you know Rocky Horror you know is a Christmas show, and you can't be this clean face either unless you unless you want to. But there's no point going to either extreme if you have a demonic spirit on you. Okay, so again, we have to carry ourselves as godly women. We are supposed to carry ourselves as women of God that, yes, you know, we can wear a little bit of makeup, you know, but we know in our, I'm not, I'm not behind the camera all day, you know, with selfies. I'm not, I don't have a spirit of vanity. I don't have a spirit of pride. I don't have a spirit of promiscuity. I don't have a spirit of, 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 of lust. I don't have a spirit of Jezebel. You have to discern, my friends, by the fruits you will know. I don't have a religious spirit either. And this is why, again, you know, as women of God, we need to abide what the Bible says, you guys. We need to walk with the spirit of the Lord and not the, the demonic spirit of Antichrist that's out there. You know, again, going back to the promiscuity, we have to stop. Okay. A, we, you know, you can't be a Christian and, and, and still, in, uh, Continue to be involved in that type of lifestyle. And even with promiscuity, even among non-believers. Listen, this world says you can have sex with whatever and whoever and however you want it. That includes sex toys. That's all demonic, my friends. And you wonder why, you know, you have these addictions to sex. You have this, you have an addiction to watch pornography. You have an addiction. All of these addictions, it's not you. It's the demons, the spirits that are associated with these activities, these ungodly activities, which is also sin, that is, uh, you know, coming to the kill, still and destroy you. And that's why you need deliverance. Uh, the same thing when a, a woman or a man, but in this case, a woman uh, who has been involved in a in a in a uh, promiscuous or sexual lifestyle, even as a Christian, you know, that you will face spirits of infertility. You will face spirits, you know, the, uh, cases of premature births, you know, or the homosexual spirit. You know, people, the, the world says, oh, well, kids are born that way with that homosexual spirit. Oh, the little boy was homosexual since he was two or three. Well. In the physical, yes, you're right. You probably have seen those observations uh, from the ages of two or three. But you know where it stems? It's, it stems from inside the womb. If you are pregnant or you're married and you want to be pregnant, you want, you want a family, you have to pray that the Lord, that the blood of Christ covers you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, that and of your husband, not your partner, not the man that you live with, not your boyfriend, not the woman that you live with, no. Your husband, your wife, my friends, it's marriage. Sex is for marriage only, okay? And if the church doesn't preach it, that's the church. This is why you have to go to the Word of God and see what He says about it, okay? But the reality is, as a Christian, okay, you need to ask the Lord to bless you and your husband and to remove and cast out whatever foul spirit that may be lingering from your history as well as his history or vice versa, and break the curses, break the chains, break the witchcraft, break any foul spirit that perhaps you've never known about or you never repented about it, this is the time to ask the Lord to break it. Now, um, now with the things like uh, with pagan practices like yoga, okay, 
Uh, there's no such thing as Christian yoga. For those that do not know, but yoga comes from the Hindu um, religion or the Hindu uh, culture. Okay, as we know that uh, God loves Hindus. He loves the Indian people. But uh, reality is they practice pagan worship. You ever, if you go to India they and you do research on what they believe, they have like a million gods or something like that. So obviously if it's not Jesus, it's a spirit of antichrist. Okay, so why would a Christian would want to align themselves with yoga or any other pagan practice of meditation, law of attraction, power positivity, chakras, Reiki, etc. Halloween, uh, things of the occult, Ouija boards, paranormal things, all those things have the spirit of death, okay? No God-fearing, Bible-literate, prophetic, discerning Christian should be playing with the things of the occult, should be playing with the powers of darkness. They shouldn't be playing with or even dabbling into the things that are dark because if it doesn't glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, it glorifies the devil. So you are opening up yourself again to demonic, pagan demons my friends and this is why i've noticed i had some i have some friends uh they're not believers they're, but they're wonderful women that i've known for a long time but i've noticed that every time um they have uh i've noticed that for the most part that women who have had really bad pre uh, pregnancies or they have premature births they happen to be yoga instructors you know, they can't get pregnant. They can't hold a baby for a full term. It's because that spirit of death keeps lingering. It keeps lingering. And it wasn't until prayer for one particular friend, uh, you know, God set her free. He broke that curse off for her because in her third child, which was a miracle that God actually opened up her womb after prayer, uh, the Lord, um, I, 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 you know, the Lord must have heard my prayer for her as I prayed with her uh, because she that was the only baby out of the three where she was able to carry the full term and the baby never was at the ICU. But the first two, it was, and she happens to be a yoga instructor. So again, um, this is just one out of many examples how God, you know, the power of prayer, the power of the Word of God, the power of the name Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach, it is powerful. It destroys the powers of darkness in His name, Jesus Christ alone. Okay, so I'm going to continue here with the part two which is this segment right here. Uh, for with God, nothing will be impossible, okay? That's something that he's been speaking to me over the last several weeks or so, that scripture. Uh, God does miracles, my friends. Listen, you gotta, if you are a Christian, you got to stop putting God in a box. Enough is enough. He is the creator. He created the sun, the universe, the stars. You know, believe me, a womb, a uterus is easy, easy peasy for him. And a lot of Christians have to stop believing and come into agreement with the doctors are saying, with these atheist liberals and ungodly medical professionals, that all they do with their mouths, oh, that's not going to happen for you. Oh, look at your age. Oh, look at your, 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 your blood work. Oh, look at this doom and gloom. And if you come into agreement, you're not believing what God has shown you for your life. If God has shown you that you're going to get married, if God has shown you you're going to have a family, okay, you have to believe in his report because he's the creator. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Not some Dr. Joe Schmo, not these nurses, not these obstetricians. They're just instruments. And sometimes they're ungodly instruments. What is it? Why would a child of God, a Bible literate prophetic Christian, discerning, you know, Christian who knows the word of the Lord, who knows the Lord, why would, would you ever believe what these ungodly atheists have to say? Most of the time, they throw word curses, they throw doom and gloom and foreboding. Okay, and that's why when you come into agreement with these things and you're believing the devil's report that, that speaks through their mouths, you're not letting the Lord do what he must do, and you gotta repent of that. So I want you to be encouraged if you are a woman, a Christian woman, or even a non-believer. I want you to know that as a woman, you know, the world, look at these ungodly women with this Me Too and this Planned Parenthood. That is demonic, my friends. Those are not ungodly women. Those are Jezebels. These are women that are that are possessed by the spirit of Jezebel and Baal and witchcraft. And a lot of these women, guess what? They're they're um, not only are they liberal, but they are witches. They are warlocks. They, they, they practice Wicca. They practice all these demonic, you know, uh, you know, Satanists. They're, they're Satan, I'm sorry, Satanism. That's what they do, my friends. They, 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 they work in all those things. And even, even, uh, the New Agers. New Age is witchcraft. Law of attraction, power positivity, all those things. Chakras, Reiki, it's, uh, that's witchcraft, my friends. There's no such thing as white magic and, ver and black magic. In God's eyes, that is witchcraft. It's an abomination in His eyes. And you better not be caught with it because if you do, you're going straight to hell. 
yourself. This is why you have to repent and sin no more. Listen, there's only one God. His name is Jesus Christ. Whether you like it or not, whether you hate to hear that or not, that is a doggone truth. There is only one God, and, and it's Jesus Christ, the Father Yahweh, or, or Abba, Jesus the Holy Spirit, and He is the one that can make the miracles. He is the one that can bless you. He is the one that can protect you. He is the one that can set you free. And I want to end this message here with a message of encouragement that if you are a woman, non-believer, listen, I was just like you six years ago. I'm going to cut to the chase and just, just save your time. If you are wondering about your purpose, why, you, why are you here, uh, you know, um, is, there, if, is there a God? I'm going to cut to the chase and give you the truth. Yes, there is a God. And his name is Jesus Christ. It's not Buddha. It's not Vishnu. It's not New Age. It's none of that. It's none of these like Deepak Chopra, Dalai Lama nonsense. Okay? It is Jesus Christ. It all goes back to the good old Bible. Okay? The Bible that's still number one in the world, my friends. That's it. What's the relationship with Jesus? Bible, talking to him. That's it. And if you're able to find an amazing on-fire church with amazing on-fire God-fearing, Bible-literate, prophetic Christians, discerning Christians, that is a blessing. You know, and I'm thankful that I was able to find a great church with that in here in Atlanta. But at the end of the day, it's about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to be, I want you to know that you are a woman that God created and he took such great pleasure and delight when he made you. And it's not too late. And if you are in pain, if you are struggling, you know, with, with just, with, with just a day to day, you know, if you're hearing voices, if you're living with this, this fear, with this torment, with this anxiety, I want I want you to go to Jesus Christ in, in that moment and say, Lord Jesus, I, I forgive me of my sins. I don't know you, but you must know me. Please give me a sign. Please give me a dream. Please give me a vision. I repent of all my sins. God, I don't know what they are, but I repent, God. I just pray, Jesus, that you would just open up my heart and let me just have an encounter with you. And then you get yourself a Bible, and you start reading it, and you start seeking him. That's it. It's not religion, you guys. It's just a relationship, okay? So, and if you need help with that in the sense of someone to lead you to the Lord, feel free to e message me, email me, and I'll be more than happy to pray with you so you can open up your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your God, him only and him alone. And he knows everything about your life. You know, he knows you can just tell him how you feel, of course, with reverence and respect. But you go to him and you tell him everything. You, you, your pain, your hurts, your dreams, your fears, your hopes, your aspirations. God already knows. He knows all about it. And he loves it when you go to him. He loves it that you are that he, that he you are his child and you're seeking his face, voice, spirit, Holy Spirit, and presence in his word. That's all he wants is your heart. And for you to repent, to sin no more, and be the child of God that he has called you and destined for you to be. That's my message for every non-believer, man or woman, okay? Now, for the believer, the Bible says judgment starts in the house of the Lord, okay? You guys, we were meant and we are called to be the light of this world and to be the salt of the earth. The games are over. Playing church is over. Mocking God, scoffing at God, it's over, you guys. We need to lock shields. That's what God told me about a month ago. We need to come together, united, you know, locking shields, you know, like soldiers, like gladiators, which I'll talk about that in another, in another video. And we need to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit because the bottom line is, our hypocrisy, our sin, whether it's sexual or non-sexual sin inside the church is pushing many people away, including Christians, baby Christians, and also non-believers. And God is furious. God is angry. He says, enough. You're mocking the Lord. You're mo we're, mocking when we we're mocking him when we do that. And we're becoming stumbling blocks for the brethren. So it has to stop. Now, with that being said, as a Christian, as a daughter of the Lord who loves the Lord in truth and in spirit and wants to worship him alone in truth and in spirit, a daughter of his who seeks his correction, direction, protection, and rebuke and conviction daily. That's how we have to be, both men and women inside the church. That's how we have to be. We have to give him reverence. We have to give him respect, okay? Enough with mocking him. Enough when his house is a house of prayer, you guys. And unfortunately, many people in many churches, they keep treating his house like a marketplace or a freaking circus and God is sick and tired or a comedy show, okay? His house is a house of prayer and a place of worship where he gets the glory and when we enter his house, we abide in his code, in his and his, uh, and his spirit, and his Holy Spirit, with humility, with reverence, with holiness, with purity, in the name of Jesus. Okay? And we show him that same respect when we enter his church and when we leave the church. 
at the workplace, in the college campuses, wherever we go, even in our own homes, we have to walk with that utmost respect and reverence for him and live out what he has called us to live. He didn't only call us to preach the gospel, he wants us to live it out. It's to crucify the flesh. 24-7, my friends, and allow him to correct and convict us daily so we can be those true children of God, his royal priesthood. Listen, if you are a Christian woman who is going through these problems, okay, I want you to be encouraged that nothing is impossible for the Lord, okay? I've had sisters in Christ that I've had encounters with um, just non-believers that God has done amazing miracles, Seriously, women that had, have had infertility issues for seven years, like this Hindu woman uh, that I prayed for four years ago when I moved to Atlanta. And I went to a salon really quickly. I went to a salon. And when I was about to pay, uh, when she came back to give me my credit card, uh, she uh, she was limping. And I asked her, is that, are you okay? What's wrong? You know, what's wrong with your leg? You know, and the reason why I asked is because I had the gift of healing in the name of Christ, of course, according to his will, purpose, and glory. So when I asked her, she said she was limping because she had some female reproductive problems, like a cyst or something like that. And uh, so I said, well, listen, you know, uh, Sue, if you like, I can pray for you. Uh, but I am a Christian. Are you a Christian? And she was like, no, I'm not. I'm like, well, she's like, are you open to prayer in the name of Jesus? She's like, yeah, 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 sure. I believe in anything. I'm like, yeah, there's only one God. It's, it's Jesus Christ. And I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you, is it okay if I pray with you? And she was like, yeah, sure. I, I, I'm open to it. So I asked the Lord, I, before I even prayed for her, I, I asked her, I was like, is there anything else would you like me to pray for you about? And she's like, yeah, pray. She's like, she's like, please pray for her healing and also pray for a baby because her and her husband were trying for a baby for seven years. And they had, they, they obviously it wasn't happening and it was just kind of like bringing them down. So right there and at, at, the, at the salon, I just literally just laid gently my hands over her stomach region and I prayed to the Lord, Lord, if it's your will, and I want to emphasize that, we can pray, but it has to be in his will, okay? I said, Lord, if it's your will, I pray that you will heal Sue from whatever infirmity or, or you know, malady in her, in her reproductive system. And I pray, God, if it's your will to bless her womb, you know, in the name of Jesus. So um, I, did, I definitely felt the Lord's presence. I felt uh, the anointing over her. She's a Hindu, you know. And um, I said, and I just pray to God, I believe that I, 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 my faith is in you. No one can tell me nothing is impossible for you because I've seen your glory, God. I've seen miracles. I've seen, uh, you know, cripples walk. I've seen deaf people being healed. And I really believe, Lord, that a womb is very easy. So I, I believe I have this radical faith that if it's your will, you can make this woman healed and be blessed in the name of Christ. Okay. I left. I gave her a Bible. And then about six weeks later, I returned back to the salon and I was looking for her and she wasn't, she wasn't there. So, uh, the, her colleague, I said, Hey, I was just looking for Sue. I, you know where she is? And she's like, Oh, I don't know. She's been coming here late. She, she's leaving early. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And she's like, yeah, she's been really sick lately and she's been throwing up. So I, I asked her, I'm like, well, is she okay? Like, I hope she's fine. And she's like, Oh yeah, yeah, she's fine. She's fine. She's just pregnant and she's been having morning sickness left and right. So I don't know. Come back later. Maybe you'll find her as soon as I left the salon I literally was crying in my car because I that was a miracle that God only did and it was his will I share that with you because out of once out of that story there are many other testimonies where I've seen God show up and show off in people's lives and God has blessed their wombs again according to his will and I want to make it clear I'm nobody I just pray you know again the anointing the glory the, the will belongs to the Lord. It's up to him. Okay. And I want to encourage you if he can do that for that woman, Sue, and others that I know, including some of my friends, testimonies, the non-believers. He's performed miracles in my non-believing friends. And, and even now in a recent Christian, I want you to know that God can do the same thing for you too. Again, stop putting him in a box. So I'm going to end this message with this prayer. And I hope that this blesses you. I, I pray tears of happiness over your life in the name of Christ. If this message is too tough, I'm sorry, but I have to say it this way. Maybe to wake you up, maybe to encourage you, maybe to just get you to realize that we serve an almighty God whose word is life. His word is a fire. His word uh, is so powerful that it destroys the powers of darkness in the name of Christ. The demons tremble at the name of Jesus. The, dem the devil trembles at the just the mentioning of his name and of his word wherever you open up the Bible. 
the devil trembles. Remember, we are in a spiritual warfare. So just bear with me as I'm about to close out in prayer. If you guys need personal prayer, let me know. I'll be more than happy to war with you. Okay? And in the name of Jesus. And and, and just know that God is for us and not against us. Okay, so here we go. Again, if you know someone that needs to be encouraged or needs personal prayer, please share this post or this video with them. All right, here we go. Lord Jesus, I pray that you destroy every demonic spirit of death, theft, destruction, witchcraft, barrenness, pestilence, disease, miscarriage, stillborn deaths from your daughters in Jesus' name. I pray that you burn every demonic chain, soul tied, stronghold curse, word curse, generational curse off every woman's womb according to your will, purpose, and glory. Father, you have blessed women with the fruit of their wombs, and I pray that you burn the evil spirits of abortion, goddess pagan worship, yoga, promiscuity, depression, oppression, foreboding, fear, anxiety, debauchery, fornication, adultery, Jezebel, perversion, perdition, corruption, lust, pornography, homosexuality, off their lives, their wombs, and their destinies in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus, and I know countless testimonies in which you, Lord, have per performed miracles in the lives and the wombs of women I know according to your will, your purpose, and your timing. So I want to make it very clear for any person that's doubting right now, listen up. Be advised that your doubt, your negative thoughts or words and your zero or to little faith will not be tolerated because I'm declaring that my faith is in Christ alone and I believe he can do the same miracle in your life if it is his will. God did a miracle for Sarah, for Elizabeth, for Hannah. And do you honestly think God cannot do it for you? Do you honestly think that fixing, healing, restoring a body and or a womb is hard for him? God created the universe, the stars, and the earth. And trust me when I tell you that ovaries and a womb are super easy for the Lord. Some of you Christians out there, you need to stop believing and relying fully on science, machines, and the foreboding word curses that many of these atheistic, ungodly doctors keep saying. The heck with them. What God has shown you, that's what I want you to meditate on. Think about that. What has God shown you? You know that journal that God has shown you divisions and dreams and, 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 and words that he has shown you and you have written them down. I want you to grab your journal, hold on to his promises and believe that God's report is where, is where we stand and we believe in. And no man, no woman, no devil from hell can stop what God has already planned and ordained in the name of Christ. Okay? Remember that we walk by faith and not by sight, and that Jesus is faithful and that nothing is impossible for him. Again, if you need personal prayer, feel free to message me and I will pray and I'm contending, okay, for God's perfect will, his promises, his joy over your life, your inheritance, your restoration, your recompense, you know, over your life. I'm in, in agreement and I'm contending for his perfect plans and will to manifest and transpire in your life in the name of Jesus. I pray happy tears, just heaps of joy over your life in your marriage, in your family, and that your children's laughter will be so loud, just so loud that you would say, God, thank you because you did all this and you get all the glory. So I pray that this has blessed you. You know, I pray that this really cool scripture that God's been really stressing, you know, um, you know, uh, throughout the last two weeks, uh, of December 2018, I kept hearing the word uh, from the Lord, the message that said, nothing's impossible with the Lord. And I also kept hearing, you know, walk by faith and not by sight. And remember the woman that I told you about, Sue? So check this out and I'll end it with this. Uh, just a few weeks, um, right after the holidays, literally like beginning of the year, I was on my Instagram page because I had to post a message, message for, the, for the ministry. And I happened to come across Sue's Instagram page. So check this out. I uh, When I clicked on it, she doesn't have one, but she has two babies and she's now a Christian. How do I know this is because when I was looking at her pictures, one of her recent pics, I saw her first baby taking a, a picture with the Christmas tree. So obviously they were celebrating Christmas. So we'll get, okay, from Hindu to Christmas. Okay. And um, then I scrolled down and I saw her two babies. And you know, what's interesting is 
as I scroll down, scroll down her older pictures, her baby was born February 2016. I prayed for her the summer of 2015. So when I calculated the time from nine to 10 months that I prayed with her, it was the same time, around the same time, or actually pretty much the same time that he was born, you know? And what's even cooler is that when I saw, um, when I kept scrolling her, her pictures and stuff, her recent pics, so she's a, you know, she's a former Hindu, right? So she does like eyebrow threading and, um, uh, Back then, I don't know if she still does now, maybe, but she, she she does henna. So for those that do not know, henna is not Christian-like. So as a Christian, we're not supposed to engage in henna, okay? But the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I noticed that I, I, I'm, I'm maybe she's, she keeps doing that, but what was cool is that in her, in her uh, job doing the henna, she was doing instead of that, 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 in, that Hindu design, she was actually like doing a cross. You know, and I remember she put like Philippians 413, you know, on, on one of the pictures that she posted. And then there was another henna design with a cross and it said Ezra, you know, so there was scripture there. Now, I was like, I was so moved by it. And of course, let me make it clear. Henna is not of God. So we have no business in doing that or putting that in our bodies. You know, it's the same thing with tattoos and piercings. Uh, but in this case, you know, I don't know what God is doing in her life. But if God can use her, at least to promote the gospel and however God wants to use her, you know, I'm not going to come against what God is doing in her life. My job is just to pray for her and like, Lord, you know, give her discernment that eventually, you know, like she'll realize that that's not of you. But the fact that, you know, she's a Christian now and, um, and yes, we know that the Christmas tree is, is pagan. You know, I, I get that and I understand that. And, and I, I agree, Christmas trees are pagan. But again, it's a symbol of Christmas, right? So again, we as Christians, we have to practice so much discernment and we can't come against and crush everything. You know, everyone's in a different process. Everyone's in a different phase. And most importantly, we just need to pray that God has his way and that God will glorify himself, you know? So I was just so happy to see that this former Hindu who didn't believe in anything, she believed in whatever, is now a Christian. And in a, in a very um, silly thing like henna, which is not of Christ, but she's using that simple thing. You know, the, you know, the Bible says God will use this, the foolish things of this world to shame the wise and the strong. If God has to use a, something so silly like henna for his glory, I'm, I'm no one to come against that. I say, Lord, you have your way. I don't know what your plans are. Your My thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, my ways are not your ways, God. I bless you. And I thank you that you saved her and her family. And they're no longer Hindu. They're not Christian. And not, not only did you give her one baby, but you gave, you, gave, you gave her two. And she realized that it was you, Lord. And you gave her, and, he, and she gave her life to you because you performed that miracle. And I'm so happy that I went into that salon to get my eyebrows, you know, threaded. You know, something silly. And that's what I want to tell you guys. Listen, we as Christians... It's, it's very, very important that we have to walk in discernment and we have to know the word of God and we have to be led by his Holy Spirit, okay? It's so important. We have to stop putting God in boxes. We have to stop saying, oh, God can only use me in a church. God can use you any space anywhere in any location if we go to a dark place for example like a nightclub if i go to our nightclub i'm not gonna go there to drink booze and dance for the night away if i carly goes to a nightclub it's because i have my bible and i have my little you know my little bible packages and you know i have my little my little cds my christian worship cds and my little you know my little jesus loves you note cards if i if i go to a nightclub is to that to have my little stash of goodies you know and to minister to people and go and say okay lord which person do do i need for you to like you know for do you want me to minister to you know and and just like that in in any place listen be receptive be open don't let god use you at the gym at walmart at home depot at ihop at Applebee's, at the gym, um, you know, at the post office, at the workplace, you guys, you don't know who needs a breakthrough. You don't know who needs a miracle. You don't know who is suffering, whether they're suffering because, of course, they can't have a baby or they're having marital problems or they're suffering with addictions or strongholds or they're suicidal. 
or whatever. I'm happy that a silly, something so silly, I need to get my eyebrows better because they're kind of bushy. I'm happy that God sent me there, okay? And I, and I went there to, to get my eyebrows threaded and God had a different plan. God put that woman there without even me knowing it, but I had my Bibles in my bag and I was able to minister and bless Sue and God did the miracle. And now that woman, her household, four people in that household are Christians, my friends. And that's what I'm trying to encourage you and tell you all. Let God send you to places and people and, 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 and go to events. Listen, as long as you glorify the Lord. And that's what the Lord told me. Anything you do and say, as long as it glorifies God, he is happy. Be intentional. Pray. Minister. Bless, my friends. Let God use you as that holy and righteous vessel. For his glory. Okay? Let him use you. The anointing, my friends, is a brutal price to pay for the anointing. Casting out demons in the name of Christ or, or laying hands on people and healing them in the name of Christ, of course, if it's the Lord's will, you have, just like Daniel and many other people in the Bible, they had to fast, they had to pray, they had to live holy lives because demons cannot cast out demons, okay? So if your heart is wicked or you are involved in sexual, non-sexual sin, you have to repent and sin more because demons cannot cast out demons, okay? It takes the crucifixion of this flesh, crucifying the flesh daily, and walking in the obedience of the Lord 24-7, picking up your cross, intercessing, praying, and especially the heart. You have to love people. You do things out of the heart. If your heart's not there, ask the Lord to, to change that heart from a heart stone into a flesh and to love his people and love him and hear him and see them the way he does so God can use you. Ask the Lord to break your heart for the things that break his. And when you have that attitude, it's miracles like Sue. It's miracles that I have seen that the Lord has performed in strangers' lives in addition to my closest friends who are non-believers. I thank God that he is so awesome that he will listen to a, his servant and he would listen to a prayer because out of the heart, the mouth speaks, my friends. And he has done miracles in my friends. They may not know it. They may even like acknowledge it. Some may have, some may not. And some, it's a 50-50 on that and some of them, you know. But I, I'm happy regardless, my friends. And I'm happy when God blesses my friends. I'm happy when God blesses strangers like Sue, you know. And the thing we need to keep uh, in mind is that when we do things for the Lord, you know, we do things for people, we do it unto the Lord. We should never have a, a, an attitude of expectation. We should never have an attitude of, well, I did this for someone, you owe me. If that's you, you got to repent of that because that's not the Lord. Jesus did miracles, signs, and wonders. He died on the cross and never was he like, well, you know, you owe me. Remember the, ten, the 12, uh, I believe it was the 12 uh, lepers or the tw and he healed, or is it 10 or 12? Correct me if, if I'm wrong here. But only one came to say thank you, you know. So if you do things for people, do it because you love the Lord. And do it because you love and you have a heart for his people. Otherwise, don't do it. God doesn't want... Fakeness, my friends. God doesn't want people that do things mediocre because it's an obligation or I have nothing better else to do. He is looking for righteous lovers, Holy Spirit filled, God fearing, Bible or prophetic Christians whose hearts break for His, you know, for the things that break His, the people and the things so we can pray, so we can bless, so we can minister and never have a heart of demands, never have a heart of expectations, never have a heart that you owe me something because we don't do it. That's not, that's not what we're called to do. So again, when you have that approach and you allow the Lord to use you, oh God, God gets the glory. And it's so beautiful to see the evidence of his miracles manifest in people's lives. And that is what it's all about. That's what it is to be in the Father's business. So again, I, I, I'm about to leave with this message or about to uh, end this video. I hope you have been encouraged. I hope you have been blessed. I hope you were able to understand to this uh, what is happening in, in the sense of this uh, spiritual warfare that we're facing and know that nothing is impossible for the Lord. I bless you. I love you all. Thank you so much for praying for me and the folks involved in this ministry and may the Lord show up and show off so mighty, so big in your life that you have tears of joy and that testimonies will come out of each each and every one of you. Remember, you are beautiful. You are worthy. You have a purpose. It's not too late, my friends. It's not game over. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. Listen to the voice of Abba or Yahweh, just the Holy Spirit, who has amazing plans for your life. And you gotta, and you have to 
consecrate yourself to him. Be obedient, be faithful, be holy, be pure, fear the Lord, know his word, wear your armor, and fight for your God-given prophetic destiny. Though there's, there's so much at stake here, and you need to press in and walk into that promised land. Never let the devil take from you ever again. Don't let the devil steal from you, kill, destroy you ever again. It is time to take it all back in the name of Christ. If you need prayer, feel free to message me and I'll try to post more videos in the hours and days to come. Take care. God bless. Love you all. Bye.